Here in this pot, we have our wild bird seed. We have a colander off to the side there. And this is one of our 16 ounce care jars. Uh, I went ahead and measured out two of these guys uh, and one of the 32 ounce ball jars out into this pot here. Now, I'll usually fill it up to about here just because uh, during this process, it's really easy to uh, have a lot of grain come loose. These are much smaller grain. Usually when people uh, want to dry them, the best way of doing that is by putting it on a screen um, of, of some sort. Me, I use this colander as well as a couple of other uh, strainers. Now the most important aspects of wild bird seed is of course the milo and millet. That's the primary reason why you'd want to get wild bird seed in the first place. Um, the black oil sunflowers, they uh, that seed is okay. It's not terrible. Um, it's certainly not as good as uh, millet or milo, uh, primarily milo. Milo is pretty much is is better than uh, it, than millet, but the both of them together aren't so bad. In fact, uh, used on oyster mushrooms, a three to one ratio of millo to um, milo to millet is the best thing that you can do. Uh, some fun facts about milo and millet. Uh, milo comes from the sorghum plant, uh, whereas millet comes from all sorts of, of grasses. Did you know that millet, 97% of millet production comes from Asia or Africa? Millet is a big thing over there. It's used as a cereal um, for both human and livestock. And you know what? It's kind of awesome that we're able to get that stuff over here, uh, even though Milo is, uh, you know, pretty much better in every way. <laughs> As with all seeds, there is going to be some give and take. There are some pluses and minuses to using wild bird seed. First off, it's a lot of rinsing. Um, it's a little bit extra preparation for sterilization. Um, the grain is also more fragile than other grains, like something um, like, like popcorn, for example. And uh, to be perfectly honest, um, it can also be a little difficult to tell when exactly the grain is about to burst and, and how to uh, how to measure that by eye. Realistically, the best way to measure this and to measure the uh, saturation uh, content is to um, put your thumbnail up to it and if it can pierce it then uh, and, and not smush, then you're gonna be all right. You should be okay. Later on in this process, of course, we're gonna be doing that for real seeds, but before you get into wild bird seed, I'm just trying to let you know what you're gonna get into. Now, the major plus of wild bird seed is that it has room for a lot of inoculation points. Because the grains are so small, it allows for a larger surface area than something such as popcorn. So at the end of the day, wild bird seed is awesome because you can grab it from just about anywhere. You can find it at the Mart of Wall. You can find it at Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, it's, it's really easy to get the Milo and um, the, the Milo and Millet out of there. However, if you have access to just Milo and Millet by itself, there, there is no need to go get wild bird seed. This is just, this is just for ease of getting it. Now, another thing. Sometimes your wild bird seed will end up having, uh, like things like corn in it, uh, pieces of chopped up corn. Now that isn't terrible, but it, like at, at all possible, I would suggest getting them out of there. Uh, at the end of the day, 
you, you, you'll be fine. You'll be fine if there's not enough Milo uh, or Millet in there. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, you'll be fine uh, having the sunflower seeds in there. Through this rinsing process, I'm going to go ahead and be straining this uh, this seed into the colander and anything else that comes up and float. But I would like to remind everyone that you don't have to go all Willy Myco on it and start saying that oh every single last one of the floaters has to be out of there or else or else everything's going to go to hell in a handbasket that's the only way to do it no it's okay if you have some of this in your grain it's it'll be it'll be fine it'll it should still be okay for greatest efficiency however you will want to use just the milo and the millet so at the end of the day it is up to you do you want to get rid of more mass um if you're looking to just do it easy and and have as much uh, stuff there for the mycelium to grow on, or do you want it to go as quickly as possible? Now what I do here is just shake it up a lot so that way uh, anything from the bottom will end up coming up to the top. And from here, we're gonna go ahead and strain it. Strain it just like that. And boom! Look at that. It already looks like uh, we don't have a whole lot of floaters in there. We don't have a whole lot of sunflower seeds. However, I'm going to continue to uh, to do this over and over again, uh, just purely to strain it. Now, some people. Some people will say that you want uh, cold water. Some people will say that, no, you need hot water because that's going to be more involved later on in the tech. Honestly, for me, it really doesn't matter what temperature you rinse it with, although I would suggest using cold water when we are eventually going to soak this. Now, why would I suggest cold water? Because it's going to get cold anyway. It's <laughs> it's kind of, I don't know, I just think it's so funny how so many other uh, wild bird seed instructional videos are going to have people that are just super hardline. No, you need to get everything out of the top there. You're going to need to have the perfect temperature. Everything here needs to be sterilized. No, not everything here needs to be sterilized. Not everything needs to be this sweat fest. If you're looking, <laughs> if you're looking at this video, then it's more than likely going to be something that's you know, it's, it's not going to be grown in a lab. It's going to be something that's more of a hobby. So, you know what? Don't, don't worry about it so much. Don't beat yourself up. The water has gotten much clearer. It's still a little, still a little foggy but it is of course much clearer than when it first uh, than when it first started now if you want to be super duper clean super duper clean you'll go ahead and throw that out into this okay down here, all of this gray stuff is the calcium carbonate. I've also seen this done to where you can rinse it like this. People can rinse it before, people can rinse it after. People just love rinsing it in as many ways as possible. You know, I honestly, uh, I don't think I needed to go this far with the rinsing. I don't know, but uh, I, uh, I do like the feeling of this on my hands. <laughs> oh, now look at that water. That is much clearer. The way to test and see if there's enough water in here is going to be if your uh, finger tip uh, goes into about to about yay yay much. It's uh, it's about an inch or higher. 
You just want enough water to where if it swells up too much, uh, it's not going, the water level's not going to go below the grain line. 